Warning, the following video may contain flashing images. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings one and all and welcome back to Put It To TSCT and today we are looking at Might and Magic Clash of Heroes Blind Bags which is blinded by all the lights in here because of the shiny shiny packaging. Very nice indeed. Yes, so, um, <clears throat> Might and Magic video game. Heroes of Might and Magic, turn-based uh, strategy game that I absolutely adore. Might and Magic Clash of Heroes is a puzzle game. Uh, first designed for the DS, I will splashy splashy some inventory over the top of this while I'm rambling. Um, was then later revamped and released on the PS3 and 360. It also got iOS Android ports and a Windows port as well. And yeah, basically took lost children and put them in the part of, you know, the adults and the adventurers. And yeah, it, it, it's medieval fantasy. Standard, standard fare. I mean, let, let's be fair, it's not much. Whereas this is a selection of, you know, blind bags that were designed to capitalise on that. Um, yeah, they these this was back in 2009, 10, this sort of thing. So they're, they're quite a few years old at this point. Maybe even verging on the point of retro at this point. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love the art style. The art style is very cool, very a very um, Western anime style. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, let's have a look at the back of the packet. As you can see, it's um, advertising the uh, the video game. Uh, this does appear to be from, from mainland Europe as opposed to be the English version. But then, I don't know, were they ever released? I don't know. Ubisoft is based in, uh, I think it's France, isn't it? Anyway, the, the, the point is, you know, we, we don't talk about Ubisoft because they've gone a bit creepy, to say the least. Uh, so, yeah, in this uh, here, I have I, I, no idea what this actually says, but there is a figure, there is a marble, and there is a card. I'm well aware of this because I've had these before. As you can see, they've got different designs, different characters, different things, all of which appear in the game. And, yeah, bland bags. Very nice, very cute. Um... So let's just open one up and have a look, see what we get inside. So I can give you a better demonstration. Oh, we've got a good one, actually. So <clears throat> we have ourselves the marble with an elemental thing on it. Da -da 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 -da. Quite nice, quite nice. There is, there, is a, there is a game included with this that you can play. So you're not just like all collecting figurines and things. So that's, that's quite neat. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the older. Ooh, this is some kind of healer. Hang on. I've not set this up for focusing on the little things in front, which was a bad idea of me. Yes, we'll go put a... Oh, hang on. This has not been well designed, because it's not really going in there. Closest I'm going to get at this point. But yeah, that's, that's quite neat, aren't they? These are neat. These are well designed, well painted, well sculpted. You know, it's... Okay, ignore the big hole in the hair. But the ears, the ears there, you can actually see the ear i don't know if you can see the ear there is an ear in there i swear to you and it's just these are just neat i like these these are cool really really nice designs <clears throat> and here is the card that i was describing so uh considering it's not <laughs> in english i'm not gonna have much luck translating this for you uh if i could be bothered i'll get google translate out but uh yes yeah, she's from the haven which is the uh, the human thing she looks like a faith healer and if I remember rightly, these are heat-sensitive corners. You can play like, um, it's essentially top trumps, is like who's got the bigger number. Um, or maybe they scratch off. I don't know. It doesn't need to be heat reactive. It's something. It's been a while. It's not scratch off. And the Magicka is definitely blue. I swear these were heat responsive, but then again, they've been sat around for 10 years. So maybe the heat responsiveness has gone. I'm not entirely sure. That's it. Yes, it is heat responsive. I can just about see it. It's got blue Magicka 700s. Really got to put some pressure on these things. Anyway, whilst I'm attempting to do that to demonstrate that this is actually a thing that happens, we've got ourselves the uh, the obligatory huge sheet of paper. Um, this appears to be the story of Heroes of Might and Magic, the Clash of Heroes of Might and Magic, which is the third 
though. It's the Whole Heroes of Might and Magic 5, I think, set. And then it's got the card details explaining what the cards do. So you've got your attack and your magic. And then something else. And then you've got a selection of uh, little critters that you can collect, which is quite nice, quite nice. You've got quite a nice selection here. Uh, from five of the six factions that appear. So you've got the Inferno, the Sylvian, uh, the Necropolis, Haven, and the Academy, which is, they're basically the desert magic folk. These are the human, classic, classic mystical folk. These are demons. These are the undead, and these are the elves, which is quite nice, quite nice. So, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I, I, I've... I don't know. If I can find a English version of this, I will whack it up now, and that will replace this for a second at the very least. Um, oh, this. Okay, right. So you can just about. Hang on, if I focus, focus. No, it's gone again. Oh, it didn't last long. I swear to you, that did just go through. But yeah, so that's what you get. Um, they were a tad expensive when they were released. But nobody bought the damn things because, let's be fair, it's it's not exactly a lot here. And I don't know, mainland Europe may have been more interested, but I know over... Oh, you're not going to stand up, are you? you know, that marble's just going to roll everywhere. Just, just, just there. Um, so, yeah, essentially, it wasn't very popular in Britain. So they didn't sell very well. So there's a lot of... Um, old new stock available. So much so, in fact, I've got quite a few of these little blighters to get through. So, um, yeah. I'll be right back. Heroes of Might and Magic, the turn-based strategy game of 1995 that combined high-quality art with unusually clever artificial intelligence. Right, so, of the 30 that I had, um, I did actually have one left over from previously knowing about these, so yeah, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 out of a possible 30 characters, which, considering blind bags, ain't so freaking bad. Uh, let's start off by having a quick peek at all these marbles. These are marvellous. I, I can't even hold them all. It's just like, yeah. So each of them has a symbol on uh, and a colour representing their thing. I mean, you've got the black for the necropolis. You've got the green for the fey whales. The sylvian, the, uh, whatever they're calling it these days. Hello, hello, focus. Yes, hello. Marble in front of you. Yes. Well, those ones. You've got the, the the blues for the um for the magic users. I forget the blooming name of the thing. Interesting designs as well. Some of the colours I'm taking. I mean, look, you can see two very distinct different colours, but they're both just meant to be the same colour. It's really cool. I'm just going to throw them on the floor now. You've got your red infernos that are not particularly red. Uh, you've got your haven. Haven ones, which are quite nice. I didn't get many of them. Look at the stuff. Hang on. Ah, oh, they've all gone everywhere. Blow it. Look at, this. Look at the difference in colours. Difference in colours on those marbles. Look at them. Look at the difference. Yes, so marble, marbles, marbles, marbles everywhere. Hang on. Let's try and come back here, you. Nah. Nah. Uh, quite frankly, that's not what I'm interested in. What I am interested in is, of course, the miniatures. Uh, we got a whole herd of unicorns, which lovingly crafted. Yes, yes, focus, 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 focus. Right, you know what, black, reframe. Then re record, not fade away. Re record, not fade away. Re record, not. Unicorn! Oh, look at it. It's the colours and the vibrancy and the paintwork and it's just a quality little figure. I mean, this for a pound on its own is quite something. In fact, it comes with a little marble, a little game, a little card. It's fine, but for a pound, I'd love this thing. And the fact that they were a little bit more expensive on release, I can understand why. But this is really, really good. I mean, and then we have to look at something similar. So in the same faction, the same Sylvan faction, we have this Emerald Dragon. This was a bad idea. But look at the size of this beastie. Look at the size of it. Not them. Try and keep this in frame. This is going to be more difficult than I was hoping it was going to be. Uh, you get a massive, great big green beastie with fantastic paintwork, fantastic design. You can see a few joints where it's been stuck together, but for a little miniature, it's not terrible. It's all rubber. It's all, you know, stiff plastic. It gets a bit flimsy on the ends, which is 
pretty much what you expect. I mean, look, by comparison, you could have got the uh, Sylvan Hero, the child, which is tiny in comparison, tiny, tiny little thing. And to be honest, it's, it's still fantastic. I'm, I'm going to have to really come in close with her. Focus. Look at the paintwork on her core paint and her outfit. Look at it. And the details. And it's got the, the quiver and, and the bow. And it's just... It's an amazing, amazing... It's just, it's just, I love it, I love it, I love it. And you've got the, um, the necropolis, and you've got like a vampire. Hang on, let's get to see. Let me have a look at the vampire. You've got your vampire, very nice, with cape that does actually move because it's a separate piece. It's not just moulded as such. And you've got like, oh, this big dude here, which is pretty neat with his big old axe that does come separate and you have to put in. The hands, the, the, the thumbs do move apart from the hands, and it's like, and the, the skull is actually not just paint on, the, the, the eye sockets are actually hollow. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but the eye sockets are hollow. That's the level of detail we're dealing with here. That's the level of intrigue and detail. I mean, let's have a look. We've got the, this, this Reaper with this whacking great big scythe. Oh, the fingers. Just look at the fingers, man. The moulding on the fingers. It's come out fantastically. It's, it's so good. So, so good. And the Bone Dragon. Bone dragon, bone dragon. Look at it, all oh, ribs are completely separate and oh it's just you know the, the, the details into this. They could have really cheaped out on this, but the manufacturers, uh the designers over at Ubisoft, uh quite some in fact who manufactured these? Who actually manufactured these? Um get on the packet, get on the packet, who manufactured these? Because it can't just be Ubisoft. It can't just be Ubisoft, they can't have their own toy manufacturing thing. There's no actual logos or anything anywhere else. It's all Ubisoft, 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 collectionheroes.com. So damn, maybe it was all Ubisoft. Maybe. Um, before I jump onto them, I mean, we've got some fantastic ones. We've we, we got the... In the old... Uh, ah, I've forgotten the name of the thing. It doesn't matter. The, uh, the, the Desert Magic Tribe. We've got a whacking great big phoenix. And we've got a Dijin with, you know, this scarf is separate piece. Just, it's been plopped on during the, the making process and it's just like, fantabulous. And what a booty. And, and is that some underboob I do see? I just, there's some underboob. And for those of you that like the big uh, um, lion fella uh, with the four arms, yes, we like, we like. They did get a bit bent up in the packets, but that's to be expected and it's not like, completely taken away from anything it's quite cool and it wouldn't be enough pressure you can sort of get them back in place i mean that's that's really cool and they, they just just I, I i'm just always overwhelmed by the details and the painting work on these they're just so amazing it's they're brilliant absolutely brilliant and the size of these things as well it's like some of them yeah okay they're cool they're neat they're small detailed and you've got guys like this, and it's just like whacking great big beasties. You don't see that sort of thing consistently. You you normally get like a scaled down version. Nothing looks right in comparison. But yeah, okay. So they're not exactly to scale, but they are within reason, and they look pretty good. I mean, even even his expression. I mean, the, the paintwork on his eyes there are not perfect, but you can sort of see. The expression on his face being there and his ears popping out. This is just attention to detail. And I cannot overemphasize enough just how amazing a product this is. And I, it's a shame. It's the fact that no one was actually really too interested in them and they wound up in like arcade machines mostly over here. That was the big thing for me. This is where we found them. Those penny pushing machines, you know, you get them and you know, you, you, you push the coin in, it pushes the things in, you lose half of them down the side, but you put more coins in, you get these bags out. Of the... And these were just incredible. I was already a fan of Heroes of Might and Magic before, but, and whilst not a huge fan of the actual uh, Clash of Heroes game, because it's just a puzzle thing and it's not really my style, these were, whoops, I've dropped the horse, I've dropped the knight. These were just something else, and... You know, like like we saw earlier, you know, the weapons came separately, you have to put them in yourself. 
and just this angel is just oh I wish I wish it had the um Might Magic 4 colours rather than the clash colours, but I understand why. But he's a very good angel. And I've just dropped the sword, because of course I did. This whacking great big knight with his huge sword. It's just like, mmm. Mmm. I do like, I do like. I don't know if you noticed that, but I do like. And let's wind up on the the main hero, Godric. Come on. Show us old Godric. With the sword that comes separate and you can see oh, the design on the cape as well. It looks it looks like it's made of fabric. It looks like it's made out of some kind of animal fur. And it's just like, hmm. Just oh, it's incredible. Let's compare that to the artwork, the official artwork that comes with it, right? So uh, zoom that out and put you on that side. You can see. You know, it does, the face isn't quite there, but then I don't think this is how he appears in the actual game. I think he does have more of the chibi look, but you can see, I mean, it's not quite got all the details on the side parts there that he has on the wings there, but for something that stands, what, an inch and a half, if that, that's pretty freaking awesome. Even the sword's got some detail on it. It's just like, Ubisoft could have cheeked out and could have done practically nothing and just left it at that. They could have just, whatever, doesn't matter. And could quite easily have just called it a day, but they didn't. So all I can say is these are incredible. And more to the point is the fact that they're not bad scale if you're like me and have a dungeon mat. So you can't visit, you can't come round, you can only phone. Phone home, be appreciated. Never mind. A pleasure to hear your voice. A little more often wouldn't hurt. All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So, we have our dungeon mat slightly curled up because it's been rolled up for a while. Haven't had much use with not being able to see people IRL. Will you just get down there? So we've got ourselves the standard hero sits quite nicely one square tile. Fantastic. Then we've got like let's see the unicorn, right? The unicorn, which. Takes up two square tiles, like you would expect for a horse-sized creature in D and D. Uh, what? That's amazing. And then, what's that? the angel. How much is the angel? The angel takes up one square, slightly more than the square, but enough that you can sort of get that if the wings opened up, it would take up other squares as well. It's you know, and you've got this giant knight thing, which you could technically say takes up one square. Or if you really want to be pedantic, you say it takes up two, could take up four. Depending on how big you wanted this to represent the character to be in the thing. And like a frickin' dragon, a frickin' dragon. How many squares would a dragon take up? It could take up, say, six squares, I reckon. Six tiles. That doesn't sound unreasonable. That sounds pretty accurate to me for the size of a dragon. You know, a bit of similar sizing for the old emerald dragon. Yeah, yeah. Six tiles. So these are actually perfect if you're looking for miniatures. Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. These are detailed, gorgeous, amazing little characters that are just spot on for miniatures. And I love them because there's so much more, you know, there's so much more colour and detail in them compared to some of the other miniatures you might get. It's just, it's, it's just lovely. I love them. And to be perfectly honest, if if I have a chance now to break these out at any point using Dungeons & Dragons, I can't see a reason why I wouldn't. They're just, uh, no paint required, already there. The price is right now that they're all, you know, old new stock. Yes, okay, fair enough that it's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt because they're all blind bags. And if you try and buy them individually, you're going to be scalped through the nose. But these are brilliant. Absolutely adore them, and quite honestly, I cannot, cannot, cannot recommend you picking these up enough because they are gorgeous as is and brilliant for little role playing games. Absolutely amazing. So, yeah, they have been the Might and Magic Clash of Heroes blind bags. Uh, so, do recommend, do go and enjoy it, and until then, stay safe, play online, and uh, yeah, wear a mask. Why are you not wearing masks? Bah!